Hello guys, welcome and welcome to Meet International Academy Magic Build session. So we are discussing uh, uh, important MCQs previously asked in the AIMS Northset as well as Jigmar examinations. So especially we are focusing on other subjects like uh, uh, microbiology, uh, sociology, and these series are going on nursing research stat. So these uh, topics we are covering now because these topics are also very very important. Subjects are also very very important. So. Whoever not subscribed the channel, please subscribe the channel. Then only whatever the video we are uh, posting in the YouTube, it will reach you. Okay. So let's begin the session without wasting the time. So as I mentioned already, today we are going to discuss about important MCQs related to M microbiology. Okay. The first vital question, this question asked in AIMS Norset examinations, uh, two times they have asked this question in the exams. So food intoxication due to canned food is caused by direct question. Okay. So here they have given four options like uh, Staphylococcus, Clostridium, Botulinum, Streptococcus, Salmonella. So here the right answer is what? Option B, that is Clostridium Botulinum. So option B is the right answer. So food intoxication due to the canned food, canned food, food intoxication, that is the key points, okay? For that, which organism, which bacteria is causing this food intoxication in the canned food? Clostridium botulinum, okay? So that is the right answer. What about other options? What about other options? First, let's discuss in detail about Clostridium botulinum. So mostly if they are canning the food improperly, in an unhygienic manner, for example, canned meat, canned fish, canned honey. Okay, so these are all the canned food where the toxicity can be increased because they are adding, especially meat and fish, they are adding the non veg, right? So the cells are present in the meat, cells are present in the fish, so it will be a conducive environment for the organism to multiply. Okay, so in case of canned food, which is related to meat and fish, we have to be very, very careful. There is a chance for what? Clostridium botulinum. So canned food means immediately you have to think about what? Clostridium botulinum. That's all. Let's discuss about other options. Staphylococcus. Okay, so what is Staphylococcus? It is also a bacteria, gram-positive bacteria. It is causing, there are many types of uh, uh, Staphylococcus are present. So the family name is Staphylococcus. So it is commonly causing what endocarditis, pneumonia, all these disease conditions are caused by Staphylococcus. The next one is Streptococcus. Okay. So Streptococcus means immediately what is coming into your mind? Impetigo. Streptococcus or yes is the one which is causing, causing what? Impetigo, a skin infection. Okay. A huge uh, bump-like structure uh, with uh, pustules will be present. Okay, so that is called the one which is commonly seen in the impetigo. So streptococcus or yes, it is commonly causing what impetigo? There are so many diseases also it is caused. I'm giving one example. Okay, the next one is salmonella. So salmonella means immediately what is coming into your mind? Typhoid, gastroenteritis, right? So there are two types of uh, typhoid guys. Okay, so what are the two types of typhoids? Typhoid fever and non-typhoid fever. Okay, so typhoid fever, see, actually the organism is various. It is very important for your exams. Okay, the organism is varying here. In typhoid, it is caused by salmonella typhi or salmonella paratyphi. Okay, these are all the two things which is causing what? Typhoid fever. Salmonella typhi and salmonella paratyphi A, B, C. Three groups are there. Okay, so how it is transmitting? How the tra uh, typhoid fever is transmitting? It is transmitting through fecal-oral route. Fecal-oral route. Okay, so once... It is transmitted from person to person, fecal oral route, whatever I highlighted in the green color, all those things, points are very, very important. Okay. What are the manifestation it can show? See, fever, chills, headache, weakness, muscle ache, stomach pain, diarrhea, or constipation and rashes. So these are all the common manifestation which is shown by the salmonella typhi or paratyphi organism. Okay. These are all the manifestation or characteristics of typhi. What about non-typhi? As I mentioned already, the organisms are varied. In typhoid, Salmonella typhi and Salmonella paratyphi ABC. These are all the two organisms which is causing typhoid. Whereas in non-typhoid Salmonella, here Salmonella entrica cirrovars. It is the one which is causing what? Non-typhoid Salmonella. Okay. So here it is also considered as what? Gastroenteritis, but it is causing food poisoning. It is causing what? 
food poisoning and gastroenteritis okay it is also transmitted so the typhoid fever it is transmitted through person to person fico oral route right so here also food and water borne and it is also transmitted from the infected animals okay obviously person to person is present but infected animals food and water is also one of the transmitting route okay guys so according to the organism we have to classify the typhoid and non typhoid fever okay fine so for the first question which is the right answer option b that is clostridium kind of food means immediately you have to think about what clostridium botulinum okay the next one is the growth of influenza virus is identified by underline the keyword direct question growth of influenza virus we are going to discuss about what the influenza virus growth okay and four option they have given here that is cytopathic effect only hela cells only both a and b none four options are there among this the right answer is option c that is both a and b why we selected option both a and b c is the right answer here that is both a and b is there the c options why we selected this option guys for this you should know about cytopathic effect and hela cells only see this question asked again in aims norset exams okay so growth of influenza virus not only influenza virus any virus they are going to take a culture media i have given the image also this is the culture media where they are used to grow the bacteria virus fungi anything they can grow okay so in this culture media they are using a yes, cells okay that is why it is called as what cell culture the media is having what cells okay so the media it is a tray it is having a cells in this cells they are introducing the virus what they are introducing they are introducing the virus once the virus entered inside the media or the cell culture immediately the virus will multiply and virus will cause some injury to the cells so as a researcher we can find out what type of injury and what all the problems is created by the virus okay so based upon that they will start the treatment so this is called as what cytopathic effect the virus introduced into the cell culture media and they are checking the changes whatever happening in the cell culture okay so first option option a i have given the rational second one is hela cells let's discuss about the history of hela hela is a name of a women okay a long decades ago decades in the sense what one decade is equal to 10 years a long decade ago she got died because of what cervical cancer but her cancer cells are taken and till now they are growing in the culture media because her cancer cells are fast growing cancer cells okay and they are using it for the research purpose in that fast growing cancer cells also they are introducing this kind of virus and they are checking what all the problems is created by the virus to the cells so two medias actually they are using that is cytopathic effect that is cell culture media a normal cell culture media and hela cells that is a cancer cells culture media okay for checking the function or virulence of the virus okay so that's why we selected option a and option b okay so the next question is i have given the explanation about uh, hela cells also okay just go through it the next question is which one is a dna virus very commonly asked question both in jigmer as well as in aims they will be asking either rna virus or dna virus so you should know what are all the things coming under rna and dna okay so they have given four options like hepatitis b rhabdovirus arbovirus none of this so four options they have given here among this right answer is option a that is hepatitis b hepatitis b is the right answer or dna virus is hepatitis b all other virus like rhabdovirus arbovirus or coming under what rna virus how i have classified this it is a memory based question you should have to remember the name of the organisms coming under dna and rna virus okay so let's see what are all the organisms hepatitis b smallpox adenovirus retrovirus herpes virus or coming under dna virus i have highlighted in red color also okay just go through it hepatitis b smallpox adenovirus retrovirus herpes virus coming under dna virus that's why i selected option a whereas rna virus or hepatitis virus except hepatitis b hepatitis b is a dna virus all other virus like hepatitis a c d e everything is coming under what rna virus okay other than that rhabdovirus influenza virus measles rubella polio hiv are coming under what rna virus 
Just it is a memory based question. Remember this by using some mnemonic. You can remember this. No need to worry about that. Okay, fine. So here for this question, DNA virus question, the right answer is option A. That is hepatitis B. The next question, which one of the following is a filamentous bacteria? Actually, in this question, they are asking about the structure of bacteria. In that particular structure, what is present? Filament is present. Okay, filament means what? A snake-like appearance is present. That is called as filament. Okay, okay. So they have given four options like mycoplasma, spirochetes, actinomites, and vibrios. Four options they have given here, and here the right answer is what? Option C. That is actinomites. Okay, actinomites is the one which is having a filament. So what is actinomites? First, I will be telling the characteristic feature of the actinomites. Actually. Actinomites, it is a form of bacteria. It is a bacteria only, okay? Form of bacteria, it's, which is existing between bacteria and fungi. That's bacteria or fungi are mixed with each But in the collective, it is also a bacteria, actinomites. Okay? Which belongs to a group. For this type of bacteria, they have given a name called as Prokaryotic gram positive bacteria. What they have given the name? Prokaryotic gram positive bacteria. So always remember prokaryotic gram positive bacteria, which is having filaments. Then you have to go for what? Actinomites. Okay, guys. Fine. So here, which is the right answer? Option C is the right answer. So let's see about the other options also. Okay. Option A, mycoplasma, we will be discussing in detail in the next question because that is very, very important. Other options like spirochetes, vibrio, I will be explaining now. So actinomites, it is filament shape, right? What about the shape of the spirochetes and vibrio? Let's see in detail with this image. So here you can see, these are all the different types of bacteria, which is coming under spherical bacteria. See, they are classified different types of bacteria based upon the shape, like spherical, rod shape, spiral bacteria, filamentous bacteria, box shaped bacteria. It is also called as arcula, appendages bacteria, fluomorphic bacteria. Okay, fine. So for us, what is important? Well, the first one is archinomate, that is filamentous bacteria. You can see this is the filamentous bacteria. Okay, what is the name of the filamentous bacteria? Actinomites. Okay, so these are all the actinomites. These are all the filamentous bacteria. And spirochetes, it is the second option, spirochetes. Okay, here you can see it is a spiral shaped bacteria. What shape bacteria? Spiral shaped bacteria. Actinomites are filamentous, spirochetes are spiral bacteria. What about vibrio? Vibrio, here you can see the vibrio, right? It is a rod shaped bacteria. Vibrio is a rod shaped bacteria. Okay, so this is how you have to classify everything based upon the structure. Okay, guys. So let's go to the next question. Fine. Which among the following bacteria is considered as a link between the bacteria and virus? Very important question, guys. Key point is link between bacteria and virus. In bacteria and virus, there is some similarities. Okay. So that similarity is present in this particular type of bacteria. You know, a similarity in the bacteria and virus. Ko, Okay, la, and the similarity in the particular bacteria and the end the bacteria. So we have to find out the answer. So mycoplasma, spirochetes, actinomites, and vibrios. Already we discussed about spirochetes, actinomites, vibrios. As I mentioned already in this question, the right answer is mycoplasma. There is a similarity between the bacteria and virus. So which bacteria is having that kind of similarity? Mycoplasma is the bacteria. It is having that kind of similarity. So what similarity it is having? See, usually you should know the characteristic of virus. Virus doesn't have a cell wall. First key point, virus doesn't have a cell wall. Remember that. Okay. Same like that. That's why the virus is very strong. If you are giving a, uh, any kind of um, uh, antiviral medication, immediately the, we cannot destroy the virus because the cell wall is absent. Usually the antiviral medications or antibiotic, whatever you are giving, you know, it will target the cell wall. If the cell wall is damaged, the organism will die. But virus is not having the cell wall. Then how, it is very, very difficult to kill the virus. Okay. Whereas bacteria, it is having a cell wall. That's why it is easily getting death. Easily it is dying. 
because the antibiotic whatever we are giving for example if you are giving penicillin or other other uh, broad spectrum antibiotics immediately it will go and damage the cell wall of the particular bacteria and death of the bacteria will take place that is a normal criteria okay but some bacteria same like virus that bacteria is also not having what cell wall what is the name of the bacteria this is the question and here the right answer is what option a that is mycoplasma mycoplasma is a bacteria same like virus it doesn't have what cell wall so destroying mycoplasma is difficult okay guys so that's why we selected option a okay fine so this is how you have to study with each and every rational okay only you are studying the question without thinking about the key points and you are going for directly the answer and this knowledge only with the answer is not at all enough for solving nowadays for solving the question nowadays we should know the rational of each and every option then only it will be easy for you to solve the question because the time period is very very less in your exams within a single reading you are supposed to understand what is that question is and which is the right answer without knowing the rational of each and every option it is very difficult to solve the question so if you are studying a question think that you are studying four rationals of four options okay guys so thank you very much for watching this video hope the video is very very useful for you share the video to others also so, so that it will be useful for others also and if you are viewing the uh, channel without subscribing please subscribe the channel it will motivate us then only we will be posting more and more videos guys okay and if you have any doubts related to this question please drop your message in the chat box okay and thank you very much for watching this video